and we slowly transition to winter as a cold front makes its way through Chicago, St. Louis, and Dallas this afternoon. And there's our surface map for this afternoon. Frigid northwest winds blowing through Minnesota and the Dakotas. Temperatures below 20 throughout most of Montana. In fact, in that state, the coldest temperature I'm seeing is 28 degrees out there in the western part of the state. Cold front from Lake Michigan down through St. Louis. Temperatures in the 80s all the way up to St. Louis. 70s up to Indianapolis and Fort Wayne. And even out there on the East Coast, 70s all the way up into New York. So we've got quite a bit of warm air advection coming up from the Gulf, picking up that moisture and bringing that northeastward. Let's take a look at the satellite loop. And there you go. That is classic warm air advection. Stratocumulus, out to Cumulus, making its way to the northeast and a little bit further up north near Vermont, New Hampshire. We've got these little gravity waves where that warm air advection encounters the faster flow aloft. There are some breaks, though, some sunny weather around the New York City area, and temperatures right around 70 in that area. Large anticyclone, this is a weakening polar high, and we can tell that because the dew points are rather dry in the center of that. 50s. Now, if this had a tropical origin, dew points would be in the 60s and 70s. So this is migrating slowly to the southeast and sinking into that large subtropical ridge down to the southeast. Easterly flow in Florida, and that arcs around to southerly flow in Louisiana. Some of those low ceilings coming north, and later tonight, we're going to be seeing fog developing from New Orleans up to Jackson. In fact, there's a dense fog advisory for that part of the country. So if you're traveling Interstate 10 later tonight, there could be some problems with visibility. Warm air advection also making it into Texas. Those dew points all the way up into the mid-70s around College Station, Houston, and Corpus Christi. But the cold front is coming south, but that will stall out right around here from Texarkana to Waco for a couple of days. And that does happen when we have a southerly component to the wind flow aloft. Yeah, like this 300 millibar chart. When we have southerly flow, a southerly component like that, it can be very hard to bring that cold air south. That doesn't really happen until we get into the dead of winter. Then the cold air does very easily make it southward. But this time of year, we really have to get close to this trough. And right now, we don't have that. In fact, let's bring this all the way up to Saturday. Is the trough near Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri? No, not yet. But finally, by Sunday, it is near that axis. And when that happens, that gives that anticyclone, the cold air mass, a good push. And that can kick it on southward. And that's what happens on Sunday. So... By the time we get into Monday and Tuesday, it will be much colder across the central part of the country and probably not a warm-up until we get some of this ridging. That's going to be, wow, towards Thursday or Friday. So it could be a uh, cold few days here coming up for midweek next week. Back to that surface map, we're starting to clear out some of the winter storm warnings as that comma head shifts on off towards the northeast. But we do have the cold air advection. You see those little boxes being formed by the pressure and thickness lines. That's cold air advection. That's the cold air on its way south. The boxes get a little bit bigger as you get further out to the west. So there, there's a less cold advection. In fact, the cold air is already in place there in Montana. So what we've got for tonight, freeze warnings across a large swath of the northern plains from Madison, La Crosse, down towards Des Moines, Omaha, Lincoln, St. Joseph, Salina, and just north of Kansas City and Topeka. So basically that whole area looking for temperatures down to near 30, maybe even the upper 20s. 
winter weather advisory across central Nebraska, kind of in this area right there, for two to four inches of snow through tomorrow night. And in Colorado, freeze warnings around Pueblo and Colorado Springs. Temperatures down to 27 there. And in the mountains, winter storm warnings will continue, kind of in this area right there. That's going to be through midday Sunday. Could be 10 to 20 inches of snow there above 8,500 feet, which means the passes will be treacherous. But there will be good news for the skiers. The resorts will be getting good snows. And when all is said and done, 19 inches of snow at Breckenridge, 8 inches at Steamboat, 22 at Aspen, and 11 at Telluride. And that's how the satellite imagery looks this afternoon. Looks like a little shortwave moving across Mount Charleston, Death Valley. But overall, fair skies. Let's see if we can see that on the heights and vorticity chart. Yeah, a little bit of cyclonic vorticity right there in California. And we animate that and some definite energy moving out of the base of the trough into the Rocky Mountain region and into the central U.S. So, yeah, that's going to be for tomorrow evening. And that may be associated with some of that wintry weather in the Rockies and in Nebraska. And you can see what happens as we run the NAM forward into tonight. Look at this area here in the four corners. You can see that's going to start going downhill around midnight. A little band of showers working swiftly across Colorado. Snow bands as it hits the colder air around Denver. And snow into Nebraska for midday tomorrow. So that is that shortwave there that we see in California. And the other story there in the west is going to be anticyclogenesis across the northwest in the Great Basin area. And we're going to see Santa Ana conditions develop across most of California. Strong northeasterly flow. And that is associated with an increase in fire hazard risk. So to assess the potential for Santa Ana conditions, we're looking for about 15 millibars of difference between Winnemucca and Los Angeles along that line right there. So we've got 10, 17 versus 10, 14. That's only three millibars. So that is not Santa Ana conditions. This is for this afternoon. Let's go into tomorrow around midday. Oh, now we've got a gradient building across Nevada. So now the risk is increasing. We have 10, 29 versus 10, 14. So that is 15 millibars of difference. So now we're starting to build that Santa Ana potential. So there is some risk for tomorrow. And then on Sunday, 1034 millibars versus 1018. So that's going to be 16 millibars of difference. So that should be a pretty stout Santa Ana day. You can see that gradient all across Nevada, the Sierras. So those winds will be picking up as we go through the weekend. And in the northwestern U.S., the cold air advection is continuing. Cold temperatures in Seattle, 39 this afternoon, 42 with Stratus there at Portland. And we do have freeze warnings in effect for tonight from Portland, Salem, Eugene, on up to Seattle, Bellingham, Olympia. Temperatures down to 22 degrees in Washington and 30 in Oregon. So that is going to be a hard freeze for this area. Also around Pasco, the Dow's. Temperatures down to 26 for tonight, so quite cold, and they will be seeing single digits in Montana. Lots of snow on the ground, nice insulating blanket, and clearing. All right, let's head on up north, large 1040 millibar high across Alaska, offshore flow, which tends to be clear across southeastern and southern Alaska. Warm air advection on the west coast, liquid precip, 30s, so some of that tropical type weather for Alaska is returning once again, and even got 36 up there at Point Lay. All right, in northern Canada, temperatures in the teens, so this is not cold except for this minus 13 at Eureka, and 9 degrees at Thule. The rest of the area has been receiving that fire hose of 
Atlantic air over the past few days. So the temperatures up here are a little bit warmer than we would normally expect. So you're going to find cooler temperatures way down here as compared to up there in the high Arctic. So that's one of those little eccentricities that you get when you deal with Arctic forecasting. All right, the prairies, still some residual snow showers through that area, temperatures in the 20s and 30s. And yeah, Quebec, they are going to be seeing their first big snowfall coming up for Monday. Not quite for Montreal, it's going to be a mix there. The New York border going to be seeing rain, but most of this region of Quebec right there going to be seeing their first major snowfall in a couple days. Quick check of the tropics. This is almost not worth covering. Just tropical storm Tammy out there. That's going to be heading on off towards the east. And over the long term, the only thing that we're concerned with is this possible development area. 30% chance on that. That would affect Jamaica, Cuba, the Bahamas, and Haiti. Doesn't look like much potential for that to affect Florida. And we'll just double check that on the surface vorticity chart. You can see the remains of Tammy moving off to the east. Little disturbed area near Jamaica for Monday. Doesn't really get its act together. Another front slamming southeast. That's the shear associated with that showing up in the vorticity fields. And that's going to form this wall that kind of keeps most of the activity out of North America. But still kind of disturbed out there in the Caribbean. Another little cyclone moving into Nicaragua and Honduras, but looking pretty good for North America at least. So what do we have over the long term? Well, we've got this Omega block in the Eastern Pacific. It actually looks like that starts breaking up as we get into Sunday and Monday becomes more progressive, just kind of a high amplitude pattern, ridging on the west coast, so warming up in that part of the country. Meanwhile, we've got that troughing I talked about, very strong outgoing momentum in the northeastern U.S., 150 knot jet across Quebec and Maine. So everything is going to progress very quickly once we break up that omega block, ridging some decline in the amplitude of these waves. And then we start opening up the Pacific. So here's one big weather system around the middle of next week. That comes on shore Wednesday into Thursday. So we're starting to get that typical El Nino type cavalcade parade of energy coming in from the Central Pacific. So there's a good one right there. That's going to be 120 knot jet coming into Washington and Oregon. And of course, that will have effects in the central and northern Rockies. And here's a little wild card cut off low south of California. And I'll go ahead and show you one bonus chart. This is the 850 millibar heights, temperature, and winds. And we do see that frontal system through, remember I said it was Chicago, St. Louis, Dallas. At 850, it's a little bit further to the west, and that's that slope from the surface up to 850 and back towards the cold air. All right, so let's find the location of that front. There it is at 850, all the way down towards Midland. And this is going to be a midday chart. It arcs up there towards the front range, and then we see another segment through Nevada and back towards California, and we pick up a stronger boundary off of Fort Bragg, Eureka, and Arcata. Okay, so let's watch things unfold at, on the 850 millibar chart. Don't see this too often on our channel, but we see a little bit of that cold air sinking south. Pretty good plunge into eastern New Mexico for early Sunday, so it's going to be kind of a blustery day in Lubbock, in Clovis, Roswell. Maybe the UFO remains out there in Roswell will get blown around a little bit. But anyway, going into Sunday, Monday, that 815 millibar front on the move moves into Mexico. So, yeah, it's definitely pushing south. There's an 815 millibar high. There's a big plateau high across the Great Basin Deserts, and that's going to help keep that northerly flow going through Arizona and California, helping to support that Santa Ana wind 
and then we'll start gradually declining as we get into Monday and Tuesday as that gradient slackens off. But overall, a lot of ridging through this area here into midweek. You can see that northerly flow still in place. 850 freeze line all the way down towards Louisiana, Birmingham, and almost to Atlanta. So there's some cold weather, minus 10 at 850 over Illinois, but some warming up to the north. That's going to be downslope flow up there in Rapid City. And then going into the, the later part of next week, now we're starting to see westerly flow. This tends to be associated with warming. Temperatures coming up to 10 Celsius at 850. But up to the northwest, that's going to be another push of cold air that looks like it's of Pacific origin, kind of flowing like that. And that's associated with that train of Pacific air I talked about earlier. And there's one little wave right there off the coast. Doesn't look like it's too strong at 850, but definite onshore component and southwesterly flow into Oregon and Washington. And at the very end of the period, looks like another little surge of cold air coming south. Not quite as strong westerly flow in Texas. 20 Celsius, that's warm. That's going to mean 80s returning to Texas for November 6th, November 5th and 6th. So, yeah, not quite done with summer, I guess, down there in Texas and Oklahoma. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, David Mackler. Thank you very much for your support. And I do appreciate the support from everybody. It is kind of a difficult situation, balancing my time between books and software versus Forecast Lab, which also requires a whole lot of time. This is a one-man operation, so... All your Patreon support does directly support the program. All right, hope you all have a great weekend. And we got Halloween coming up here in a few days. We'll be back on Monday for the supporter edition and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a good one. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.